Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be identifying key features from a quadratic equation. If you will remember from the last video we looked at our three forms of quadratic equation that you see written right there and we identified them. Uh, we were able to look at them and just get a feel for which uh, form was which and we had vertex form which looks like this, factored or intercept form looking like that, and standard form looking like this. And we learned that there were these abbreviations for all the different parts of this. What we're going to be looking at today is how do I take this equation and take from vertex form A, H, and K, factored form A, P, and Q, standard form A, B, and C, how do I use that to find all those important key features of a quadratic? So that's the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept, the roots, the concavity, we're going to figure out how to find those from just the equation so that we don't need a graph. So let's start with arguably the most important part of a quadratic function, its vertex. And we're going to start with vertex form, and we'll do this for all of them. We'll start on the left and work our way to the right. We'll start in vertex form, and vertex form has the advantage of being quite easy. So if I'm looking for the vertex of a function, in vertex form, all I have to do is find h and find k. And if I have those, I'm good to go. So for this one, the vertex is going to be at negative 1. And notice that. This is written as plus 1, but down here I took negative 1. That's because in our equation it's minus h. If you'll think back to when we did transformations with absolute value functions and with exponential functions, the value that was in parentheses with the x always needed to take the opposite of it if I was doing this point-slope form as well. And so I do that here as well. So if I see x plus 1, h is negative 1. k, on the other hand, is exactly what we would expect it to be at negative 8. And so if I have vertex form, that is how I find the vertex, it is that easy, no joke. Factored form, on the other hand, is a wee bit more complicated. First I have to identify A, P, and Q. Well, not A specifically, but it's always a good idea to know what A is. But I identify P and Q, and then to find the x-coordinate of my vertex, I take P plus q, and divide by 2. And so that formula, p plus q over 2, which you do need to memorize, is how I find the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now once I know the x-coordinate of the vertex, all I'm going to do is plug it back in. So substitute in p plus q over 2 for x in the original equation, and that will give me my y value. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail in just a second. I promise I'm not going to leave you hanging on that. For standard form, to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, I need to take negative b, so I have to identify b, divided by 2 times a. So I have to do that as well. And then, just as with factored form, I'm going to substitute that back into my equation to find the y value. Now, I hear you cry, wait, substitute it back in, what? So we are going to take a deeper dive into how to do that. So here we are, I've just copied over the problem from the uh, previous slide. And what we're going to be doing is trying to find the vertex of these two forms of equation. So coming over here to my factored form, I need to Go ahead and identify my key numbers. A is going to be 2. P is going to be, now if you'll remember, the form says x minus, so P is going to be the opposite of whatever is in there. So P is negative 3. And Q will be the opposite of whatever is there. So the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So I know what a, p, and q are. So to find my x-coordinate, I have to do p plus q over 2. 
and so substituting those appropriate values in, I get negative 3 plus 1 over 2, which is, of course, negative 2 over 2, or negative 1. So now I've found the x-coordinate of my vertex. In order to find the y-coordinate, I take that negative 1, and I'm going to substitute it back in to my original equation. So to find my y value, and think about it, this is what this equation does. If you have an x value, it'll let you know the y value. I have y equals 2 times, and let my x value be negative 1 plus 3. And my x value is still negative 1 minus 1. So that gives me 2 times negative 1 plus 3, well that is 2, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, so all of that is going to be equal to 8, or rather negative 8. <clears throat> and so now I have the x value of my vertex is at negative 1, and my y value is at negative 8, and we are thankful since that was the same function as the previous one, they should have the same vertex, and it turns out that they do. Now we can look at the same process in standard form. Uh, I still need to find my key values. So I have a, which is 2, b, which is 4. Notice I'm taking the sign of this from what's in front of it, and c of negative 6. In order to find uh, my x value, I have to take the opposite of b over 2a, and you do need to memorize that. So the opposite of b would be negative 4. So whatever this is, you take the opposite sign over 2 times a, which is 2. And of course, if I do negative 4 divided by 4, I get negative 1. Now I take that negative 1, and I'm going to substitute it back in to my original equation. Now when you do this substitution, make sure that negative 1 goes in parentheses when you put this in your calculator, otherwise it will not handle that squaring properly, plus 4 times negative 1 minus 6, and with a little bit of arithmetic, negative 1 squared is 1, I get 2, 4 times negative 1 is minus 4, and then minus 6. So 2 minus 4 would be negative 2, negative 2 minus 6 would of course be negative 8. And so my x value is negative 1, and my y value would be negative 8. Now that I've found my vertex, finding my axis of symmetry is not going to be difficult at all. The axis of symmetry is just a straight up and down vertical line. Remember those all have the equation x equals some number, and that some number is the first coordinate of the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex. Uh, so out of vertex form it's x equals h. Uh, for factored form it's x equals p plus q over 2. You are supposed to memorize this. For standard form, is it x equals the opposite of b over 2a? Again, you need to memorize this. So once I find my vertex, finding the equation of the axis of symmetry is a piece of cake. Now let's take a look at how we would find the y-intercept from this. And the y-intercept is actually the same procedure for all three of these. Uh, it's just a little easier for standard form, uh, but let's look at this. So I've cryptically said that the y-intercept is just f of 0, and all that means is if I want to find my y-intercept, all I have to do is replace x with 0, which makes sense. If we're thinking of the y-intercept as where the graph crosses the y-axis, the x value will always be 0. So if I take vertex form, substitute in 0 for x, Factored form, substitute in 0 for x, it will give me my y-intercept. 
Now, interestingly, for a standard form, we don't even have to go through that process. It's still the same idea. I substitute in 0 for x. But look what happens when I do that. 0 squared is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So that whole term disappears. 4 times 0 is 0. That whole term disappears, leaving me with just y equals c. Therefore, in standard form, the y-intercept is always just c. It gives it to you very quickly and very nicely. Now, I suspect that it is very possible that this f of 0 business was not entirely clear. So let's do that for these two. Starting with vertex form, all we're going to do is take our original equation and substitute in 0 everywhere there was an x. So 0 plus 1 squared minus 8. So now I've got y equals 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared, of course, is still just 1. So that gives me 2 times 1 minus 8. Well, 2 times 1 is, of course, 2. And then 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So there are two ways of writing this. I can, If I'm asked what the y-intercept is, I can say y equals negative 6, or I can just say negative 6. Or if I really want to, I can write out the coordinates for it, 0, negative 6. All of those are correct ways of presenting the y-intercept. Now I can also do this with a uh, factored form. All I have to do is again substitute in 0 for every single x. And then crunch the numbers. So I would have 2 times 0 plus 3, which is 3 and 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So of course, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So I can present this as y equals negative 6 as my y-intercept. I could also just state negative 6, or I can write 0 comma negative 6. All are good ways to present the y-intercept. Finally, I can also find the roots of each equation, but it turns out that we're going to save a lot of this for a later date. Uh, so it turns out the entirety of Module 8 is dedicated to finding roots from these three forms, uh, but I will go ahead and slip into this uh, the idea that finding the roots from factored form or intercept form is really not all that hard, provided the coefficients of x are just 1. So that is, I can't have like a 2x or a 5x or anything like that. But as long as the coefficient is 1, my roots are just p and q. So in this case, if I'm, I'm looking at uh, those, I find those values, and those are my roots. There are two ways of presenting these, which I will show here. Uh, if I'm looking at the equation, I can find from this particular one that a is 2, p is again the opposite of what's in that first set of parentheses, and q is the opposite of what's in the second set of parentheses. So notice the sign change there. But when I'm writing those roots, there, there's two ways of doing it. I could say for this function that the roots are x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. Uh, that is a legitimate way to present the roots. Uh, I could also give those as ordered pairs. Uh, notice these are x values, so that's negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. So if I'm asked for the roots, I can give it like that or like that. Uh, either of those are appropriate, uh, but again, it's just p and q, whatever those are. Nothing more complicated than that. And I think I said finally on that last one too, but finally for real this time, we can also talk about the concavity of a quadratic equation. When I say concavity, that sounds like it's complicated, but really doesn't mean, uh, or really all it means is does the parabola open upward or open downward? And as you can see here, if a is positive, that is if a is bigger than zero, which is the case for the, these equations, 
uh, then we say that the quadratic is concave up. It opens upward. So concave up like a cup if a is greater than zero. If a is less than zero, that is a is negative, then our parabola is going to be concave down and open downward, uh, upside down of how we would usually think of a parabola. So this also means, uh, particularly I want you thinking about this when we go to graph, that if a is positive, we're going to have a minimum. The vertex is going to be the lowest point. And if a is negative, we're going to have a maximum. That is, the vertex will be the highest point on there. All right, that is a lot to remember and a lot to practice. Get good at these. Be able to find everything you need from these quadratic equations. Good luck.